it's Nicole Spohr here today for Simon Says Stamp with my May 2020 Making the Cut video featuring my Spellbinders Wedding Season dies and glimmer plates to create these three wedding season themed cards. Today we're going to be using a combination of foil plates and die cutting to create elegant, fun designs perfect for wedding cards. These products can all be mixed and matched to use with one another. Let's go ahead and create our foiled layered backgrounds first. Because these are such die cut heavy cards, I wanted to create some sort of interest in the background. So today I'm going to be using this beautiful glimmer plate to create a polka dot border along the top and the bottom. This is called the polka dot strip. I'm also going to be using Spellbinders Opal and Teal Glimmer Foils to create a layered foiled effect. For the first card, we're going to be doing this on the top on the bottom. And on the second card, I'm also going to create this, but only along the top edge. And you're going to see that in a little bit. So this opal foil is really see-through and it actually just kind of creates this great, almost a Versamark type effect. If Let's say if you were stamping a watermark type background, to me that opal foil kind of gives that effect. I decided to just create this layering. So we're gonna kind of offset the teal foil from the opal foil, but let's go ahead and run the opal foil through first. I find it handy to use a little a repositional tape, so this low tack purple tape works fantastic, to hold the foil plate and your foil in place on the cardstock so it doesn't shift when you are glimmering it with the Spellbinders Glimmer Hot Foil System. So I kind of did the foiling part off camera. I am going to peel away my glimmer plate and then pull up the foil and you can see that beautiful shimmery opal design on the Simon Says Stamp teal cardstock. I'm using this awesome We Are Memory Keepers. It's like a quilling and foil cutter, which is kind of new to me. I absolutely love it for holding the foil roll in place. And then it's got a magnetic ruler and this little cutter, and it works, a rotary cutter. It works fantastic to cut your foil. So now you can see I'm just shifting that same polka dot glimmer plate just a little bit over and I'm going to place the teal foil down. When foiling, the dull side goes next to the cardstock. So that shiny teal color actually is next to the glimmer plate and then the silvery or um, non-colored side goes next to your cardstock. When I peel this away, you're going to see how they kind of overlap and it's just a little shifted and it adds really fun interest to our background. We are going to do the same thing then along the bottom edge of this cardstock panel. One great thing about this polka dot glimmer plate is you can create a repeating pattern. So if you didn't want to do just a border along one side or like I'm doing here, the top and the bottom, and you want to create an all over pattern, you can do that as well. And in fact, my final card is going to show that. I also foiled this absolutely incredible frame over this. This is the Frame Details Glimmer Effortless Greetings frame with some matte silver foil there to my background to just kind of frame it all up and give my background some elegance. So we've got a top and a board, bottom board, polka dot border, this double frame border, and now I'm going to start sharing the fun wedding dress and tux dies that we're going to use to embellish the middle portion of this frame. This is my very favorite set die set from my collection. I love the wedding dress and tux and everything kind of centers around this. For me, um, I love the little kind of building the dress and the tux the way you want them to look. I tried to go with kind of summery colors here. What I love is you can completely switch up your colors to match the wedding theme, uh, the season, whatever it might be. 
The dress, you can make strapless or not. I am actually going to use strapless, I think, for both of my cards featuring the wedding dress and tux today. And I'm also going to layer the bottom part of the skirt with kind of a shimmer cardstock from Lawn Fawn and vellum. What's great, the dies that cut the dress, you can use the insert or not, but it's going to give the folds of the dress to give it a little bit more texture and character. Because I'm layering the vellum piece over the shimmery piece, I'm only adding glue right there at the top of the dress, and that's going to be hidden underneath a little band, so that's why I only added glue there. Plus, it gives the vellum a little bit of lift, almost like a tulle type of skirt. The top part of the dress was die cut from Lawn Fawn Pixie Dust cardstock, so it's super shimmery. I wanted it to look like it was beaded. One of the great things about building these for me is kind of, it reminds me a lot of paper dolls when you're little, where you can kind of dress them up and mix and match and whatever. And so picking out the colors or the different textures of paper is just a really fun thing for this particular die set. For the tucks, I opted to go with slate gray cardstock from Simon Says Step stamp as opposed to a black card stock. On my second card I will do a black tux just for something a little bit more modern and different. The tux pieces I'm kind of showing you here on camera as I am building them come with the pants and then the jacket is um, about three separate dies I believe. So it's the main part of the jacket, the sleeves, and then we have the lapels of the jacket which I like to do in a contrasting cardstock color. And I used the black shimmer cardstock from Lawn Fawn for the lapels here. Then we have the shirt piece, collar pieces, and then there is a bow tie or tie. And I die cut that from the Simon Says Stamp teal cardstock. For the first card, we're going to use the tie, and on our second card, we'll use the bow tie to not waste any of those little parts and pieces. Then there is a little or little white shirt collar dies from the shimmer white card stock that we're going to place underneath the arms of the jacket before we put those in place. I'm using an acrylic block to help hold everything down nice and flat while I continue to build the wedding dress and tux on my card. So the dress and the tux are almost done. There is a little band we want to add to the dress and then if you want to add embellishment you can. So we have the little piece that kind of hides the top or just helps tie in the top and the bottom of the dress. And then there's a waist piece. For this one, I die cut it from vellum. And then one of my favorite things to do is to take the wedding cake set. There's a little bow from this that you can use to decorate the cake, but it also works great as an embellishment on the dress. There's a teeny tiny flower and leaf for the boutonniere and I've die cut that from some Schoolhouse Red Simon Says Stamp cardstock and some Lawn Fawn Sage Leaf cardstock. To finish off and kind of tie everything on our card together, we're going to do a floral arrangement. This is going to add that nice pop of color to the design. I, I definitely went bright and colorful for this wedding card set. So for this one, we're going to do some peaches and pinks and red flowers with greenery up at the top and down at the bottom, and our sentiments were, are going to be foiled strips that we're going to pop up with foam adhesive down along the bottom edge. If you're ever looking for fun wedding color combinations, I highly suggest going to places like Pinterest and maybe bookmarking some of your favorite color combinations it comes in really handy if you're looking for something a little bit different. Um, that's kind of where I found this particular color combination. I was looking for something different than what I've already done with these uh, wedding season dyes. I've done a lot of more traditional or muted colors and so I wanted to do something a little bit more funky and summery. 
For this suit jacket, I love using teeny tiny crystal gems to decorate the buttons. And I've used some Honey Bee Stamps black gem stickers for that. A little tip for lining up the glimmering wedding sentiments here is, um, they're called glimmering wedding wishes actually, um, is to place them on some repositional tape if you want to join different words together to make a strip. So for this card, I'm doing one row that says congratulations to, and then another row that says the bride and groom. A fantastic thing about this glimmer sentiment set is that most of the words are individual or one or two words. There's a couple that have a, a few more, a couple more, I guess. Um, but they work together really nicely this way so you can mix and match. And you're going to see a couple of instances of that when I do the next couple of cards because I did use the glimmering wedding wishes on all of these. We're going to foil these phrases on some more teal cardstock. And one of my phrases kind of shifted, but luckily because it was taped together, it's still in a straight line. And then I'm going to take the Simon Says Stamp Sentiment Labels Dies, one of my most used and favorite die collections. It's a great basic. And we're going to die cut these into little strips pop them up with foam adhesive, and place them along the bottom edge of our card design. And I just want to make sure that these are lined up. They will slightly overlap the wedding dress and tux. And then to really balance this design, I want to add another grouping of flowers down there near the bottom and we will adhere this entire panel to a white top fold card base to finish the card design. For our second card, we're going to do a similar design. So we're going to do the two rows of foiled polka dots. We're going to do the frame, the foiled frame, but we're going to shift our wedding dress and tux down and our sentiments are all going to be up at the top. Plus we're going to foil some sentiments directly onto the cardstock background and we're going to incorporate a die cut sentiment as well. We're going to be using the bride and groom sentiment. So what I was doing here was adhering stick it adhesive to a piece of fun foam, running that through my die cutting machine to adhere the stick it really well to the fun foam and then adding a piece of the silver cardstock to one side of this and then running it through with the bride and groom sentiment. This is going to make a dimensional greeting that we're going to fit between two rows of foiled sentiments on our background. Once I have my polka dot borders there, I am going to tape, and you can see here with my frame, I have taped greetings up at the top and kind of down more near the middle, leaving room for the, work, the bride and groom die cut. Then we're going to foil that all at once, which is going to foil not only our frame, but those two rows of greetings as well. And there is our background. I'm using the Spellbinders tool in one to kind of piece and poke out any of the little areas in the die cut sentiment that might be sticking. And then I'm not going to press down quite yet as I want to play with the placement to get this looking the best I can. I had to play with it quite a bit just to make sure that that huge loop in the word groom wasn't quite working. So originally I was going to shift groom over to the left but I don't like how that looks very well. I wanted bride to be more to the left and the other to go more to the right or the rest of the sentiment. So I played around with that, and once I kind of get it right where I want it to go, then you can go ahead and kind of press it down in place when you're sure you want it there. So I love the mix of die cut sentiments and foiled greetings here. That die cut sentiment makes a big bold statement. I only foiled the double polka dot border at the top of this panel because along the bottom edge, then we're going to add our wedding dress and tux. 
Now part of those will be die cut, or not die cut, they'll be trimmed off since they're going to extend further than what we actually have room for, unless you wanted to do a tall and skinny type of card. But it works really nicely. I think you kind of still get that whole feeling. It's a really, I haven't done a card like this with this set yet, and I love how it turned out. For this wedding dress, I did the all of the components for the dress from the Shimmering White Lawn Fawn cardstock. And then we're going to glitter just the little bands around the waist and then around where the top of the dress meets the bottom. The tux is from Black Licorice cardstock. Pretty much everything else about the tux is the same as the last one, but we are adding the little bow tie there, so you can definitely see the difference between the tie and the bow tie. Nice little shimmery black lapels. And then I want this card to have a great pop of color just like the last one. So we are going to die cut a bunch more flowers and we are going to place those kind of up around our die cut greeting, which is the more, not totally the focal point, but just kind of a little bit more bold on this design than it was the last card. And so we're going to add our, all of those little flowers around the words bride and groom. We want to make sure and add the boutonniere to the tuxedo and then finish the center of our flowers, just like we did on the last card. I think I forgot to mention these are the Honeybee Stamps Log Cabin Crystal Gem Stickers. For our final card, I foiled the entire panel, and we're going to change what color we're using for the background. This is the Lawn Fawn Sage Green cardstock. We're going to foil that same opal foil all, um, we're going to foil the polka dot border all over the panel. So the entire four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel is going to have this very subtle polka dot background that is so pretty and that's going to be the perfect backdrop backdrop pardon me to really showcase the wedding cake it's really easy to keep lining this up I'm just going to add a new piece of foil and keep foiling until the entire panel has this great design you of course could add a frame if you wanted to I opted not to add any additional foiling to this one, but you could, I think maybe even in silver for this one would look really, really nice. Once we have all of the foiling done for the background of this card, we're going to build our wedding cake. And this is the Mr. and Mrs. Wedding Cake. I have die cut the components from the Lawn Fawn white shimmery cardstock, some silver cardstock that I layered back behind so it shows little silver embellishment on the cake, and then of course the cake topper, the Mr. and Mrs. All of that was die cut from some silver cardstock. And originally, and I already glued them in place off camera, the frosting along each layer, I did that in the same white cardstock, but I'm going to just glue right on top of that. I die cut it again from some Lawn Fawn Pixie Dust glitter cardstock, so it's more glittery and shimmery. And I like that a little bit better. It almost looks like sugared frosting. And then all of the little scallops and bows that we're going to be embellishing the cake with also from the Pixie Dust cardstock. So it gives a little bit more added interest. The cake topper, so the little sticks are separate from the Mr. and Mrs. greeting. If you want to use the sentiment without and want to use it with the wedding dress and tux or just with some glimmered sentiments or whatever it might be, you can do that really easily, which I love. So it makes that a little bit more versatile than just being a cake topper. So everything about this is pretty easy to do. I, 
We're just going to be building the cake. Again, it comes with the flowers, leaves, bows, scallops, cake trim, so you can really build this any way you want to. To make this set a more complete set that all goes together, I opted to do all of my flowers in those same colors of cardstock that I used on the previous two cards. So it's Lawn Fawn Apricot cardstock, Hero Arts Azalea cardstock, and Peony cardstock, and Simon Says Stamp Schoolhouse Red cardstock. The leaves are all Lawn Fawn Fresh Sage and Simon Says Stamp Midnight Green. I'm using some craft tweezers and a little liquid glue to build all of these little clusters of flowers to decorate the cake, which adds a great little pop of color all over the design. So pretty and fun. And I just want to make sure that there's plenty on the cake to really add that beautiful color. Now, if I was going to leave the card as is, so with just the flowers and things that you see here, um, the great little bows and scallops and the cake topper, I think I probably would have foiled a frame or die cut a frame or even trimmed this panel down a little bit smaller and matted it on another color of cardstock just to kind of help frame it up a little bit more. But I'm going to foil a couple of rows of sentiments to pop on the top of this card. So for this one, we're just going to foil congratulations and then the words to and the, and use a little bit thinner Simon Says Stamp Sentiment Labels die to die cut each of these into thin strips that we can then pop up above the card so that the sentiment reads, congratulations to the Mr. and Mrs. It ties into the cake topper. So while the cake and cake topper are the embellishment on the card, that also serves as part of the sentiment. And we're gonna pop those up with a little foam adhesive. This was the teal foil on the Simon Says Stamp teal cardstock. And I just wanna center that right there above the Mr. and Mrs. cake topper. We'll place this whole panel on a white top fold card base and then I will show you all three finished cards really quickly again. So we have our Mr. and Mrs. wedding cake card, the bride and groom card with the wedding dress and tux, and then the foiled greeting with the wedding dress and tux as well. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this Making the Cut video featuring Spellbinder's wedding season dies and glimmer plates. Please be sure to visit the Simon Says Stamp blog for more information. Thanks for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.